can chat GTP find you vulnerabilities in different bug bounty programs and help you start making money right away? The answer to this is yes. And I'm going to explain to you in this video how you can use chat GTP to find bug bounty vulnerabilities and can even help you in CTFs or penetration tests that you may be doing in the future. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's say this is our target application that we're going to be trying to hack. What you can do if you have access to any of the code like this, which is really common even in bug bounty hunting, there are programs that will give you the code for you to actually look over or in penetration tests where you're actually going to have the code and you can look over what is going on. And let's say we didn't understand what was going on. What you can do with something like this is you can actually just hit command a and then command C and copy all of this and then bring it over to chat GTP. And you can just say something like what is actually what we'll do is we'll say is this code vulnerable and then you can just paste it in and hit enter and it's going to go ahead and tell us and it's going to say there are potential vulnerabilities in this code and it's going to tell us where it is and i want to show you something that we can do even after it gets done telling us where our potential vulnerabilities is and this code is actually vulnerable and if you followed along with our resume build which is this website right here our portfolio then you know we wrote this code to be vulnerable on purpose and it is vulnerable to sql injection it tells us that it is vulnerable to SQL injection. It tells us where it is. And then we can actually just ask it, um, how do we fix this vulnerability? Just like this, I spelled vulnerability wrong, but that's okay. And it's gonna go ahead and tell us how we can fix this. And our vulnerability is gonna be in our login function right here. This is vulnerable to SQL injection. And it can, let's see if it'll tell us actually how to change it. Yes, it does. It tells us right here. This is how we would write the query if we wanted to fix it and you can see we actually did something very similar up here where we pass in these parameters right here for the user and the password it gives us the same type of statement only it only it changes it just a little bit and puts the question marks where the parameters are over here so user equals question mark and password equals question mark instead of the user and password and then we have our parameters being passed in right there as the question mark so it'll actually tell us that there are vulnerabilities and we can test a, another page or another set of code so here's our api with our input functions we can just say command c just like we did before and we can come over here and we can just say same thing is this code vulnerable and then we can paste it in and hit paste and it's going to start telling us is the code vulnerable and it's going to tell us we can check for cross-site scripting along with other things and it says that our user inputs for the user and password are being used directly in the javascript without any validation or sanitization and this allows an attacker to inject malicious code such as scripts or html into the elements so it'll tell us where the vulnerabilities are and this is going to be really important if you are a bug bounty hunter telling you about the code you can just say can you explain this to me and it will explain it to you so for example it says we can use dom purified for our input sanitization to avoid cross-site scripting and then our user wouldn't be able to inject in into our code so you can see it tells us right here how to use the dom purify and i have shown how to use dom purify probably about a year ago it's probably one of my first videos um, we have played around with dom purify and cross-site scripting so it is right in saying that we can use this that sometimes you're going to be doing ctfs and you're going to actually have to open up files and they're going to have a bunch of code in there and maybe it's a programming language that you're not really familiar with like php and you're supposed to do some kind of code analysis in this specific ctf on hack the box which is really common you can just copy all of the code from the file that you found you can come over to chat gt and you can just paste the code in and it will tell you where the vulnerabilities are and you can just say explain this code to me and it will tell you what is happening one of the next things i like to use chat gtp for is sorting out data and making it easier to read so sometimes you will get something that looks like this i need sample data in the form of json with five fields explaining principles of ethical hacking and it's going to give us this json right here and let's say that we have this json and it is really hard to read but really json is how we would really rather have it um, but i'm only using this for this example let's let's say that we get xml data from a wordpress site um, what we can do is actually say give me this data in xml and we can just paste that in 
and see what it does. And it's gonna switch this over to XML, but really um, we're gonna have the XML data and we would want it in JSON because that's easier to read. I'm just showing you how you can use this to organize data and make it easier for you to read as you come across things in a bug bounty program that may be really hard for you to read. And you can always think there's gotta be an easier way to read this. I actually have a program that I can ask it questions and it'll read all of this to me. So I don't even need to read the output. I can be looking at something else while chat GTP will read the output to me. So I don't actually have to read it. And if you want, I can make a separate video about that next week. But for now, this is really helpful for you. If you get data like this and you want it in JSON, you can just say, give me this data in JSON and it will make it a lot easier to read. And finally, one thing you can do is you can ask it like, what is this code doing? If you don't know what a specific function is doing and we come over here and we want to know what this script right here is doing, we can just copy it and we can say, what is this code doing? Paste. And it's gonna tell us it's an API using fetch. So that is what the code is doing. So you can use it if you don't know what a function is doing and you just wanna know what it's doing, you can go ahead and do something like that. So one more thing I want to show you is sometimes you're gonna have questions, just generic questions, and you're gonna say, um, what do I need to know to become an ethical hacker? And we can send this and it's gonna give us some principles. And we can say, let's say we didn't understand number four, we can say, explain to me number four, or we can just ask for more detail and see what it gives to us. It's gonna tell us, so it'll come up here and take this number four, what it told us. Let's say we didn't understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we wanted to know more about it. We can say explain more to us this way. So you can actually ask it to explain things in more detail. So let's say we didn't understand what fetch API was. We could just say, what is fetch API? And it will give us more detail about what this is or how this function works. And then you can use other ways like saying, explain number six, things like that, that will really help you understand what is going on. It's gonna really be a great learning tool for you as you're trying to become an ethical hacker. Another way you can use chat GTP is inside of a BERT request. Let's say we didn't know what this X frame is. You could just copy this and you could come over to chat GTP and say, what is, and then paste it and it'll explain it to you. This is gonna be really helpful because a lot of times you're gonna be inside of Burp and you're gonna have things happening or you're gonna see something, let's say you didn't know what a cookie was or a user agent, you can just say, what is this? Or sometimes you're gonna get different ser server types over here and you can say, is this server Apache 4.1.7 vulnerable to anything? So you could just copy that and you can paste it in over here and say, are there any known CVEs or vulnerabilities for this? And it's gonna be able to tell you if there's any vulnerabilities or CVEs known for that rather than you having to google it and then reading a bunch of different blog sites and trying to figure it out on your own it will really speed things up for you by just googling what you find over here in a burp request and lastly i want to mention fixing coding errors so if we're over here in our server and let's just say we're going to use our app.get and we accidentally have a typo and we save this we're going to have this error right here and this is a really simple error that we'd be able to just literally read this and see that we have a problem. But we have this error over here. We can just come over to chat GTP and we can say, what is this error and how do I fix it? We don't just wanna know what the error is. We wanna know how to fix it. So we can paste this in and it's gonna tell us what the error is, where it's at, and then it should tell us how to fix it. So it tells us right here, the error message says app.get instead of app.get. So it tells us we can simply fix the typo in the code. So we could come back over here and change this to app.get and command save and our server should restart and it is now working. So you can use it anytime you see any kind of errors. So those are some of the best ways to use a chat GTP for ethical hacking and more specifically for a bug bounty. Please let me know if you have any additional ways that chat GTP or any other kind of AI has been really helpful for you as you have been working towards or working in the field of being an ethical hacker or a bug bounty hunter. Thanks for watching.